Hello everyone, welcome to VMware Arena YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see the 11 things which you need to configure when you log into the vCenter server for the first time. So before you start managing your entire virtual infrastructure using vCenter server, we have to configure a few things uh, you can consider as an initial setup which needs to be configured on the vCenter server before we start managing our virtual infrastructure. Let's talk about that in the detail in this video. Let's get started. The first time when you log into the vCenter server, the first thing is to assign the vCenter server license. Basically, when we install the vCenter server, uh, it will uh, come up with a 60 days evolution license so that you know like we can make use of uh, we can evaluate all the features uh, which is available with the vCenter server for 60 days. So when you first log into the vCenter server in the top bar we can see that manage your licenses. It will say that there are expired or expiring licenses in your vCenter server. So to assign the license click on manage your licenses so there are three things we can uh, we can add a license keys whenever we add the ESXi host we can uh, assign to that one or based upon the products we can assign or asset asset is nothing but a vCenter ESXi cluster all these things so here I can see my vCenter server and it is showing that uh, license type is evolution license and it is uh, usage is one instances which is nothing but one vCenter server so um, um, if you want to assign the license select the vCenter server click on assign license so we can if you have already added the license keys we can select the license key here or we can select the new license and specify the license key and specify the license name and click on ok so this is I'm just uh, for a demo I'm typing this is not a valid license I'm just uh, cancelling it so this is how we need to assign the license. The first and foremost thing is assigning the license to your vCenter server. And the second one is creating a data center. So once we log into the vCenter server, uh, we cannot perform any actions like adding ESXi host, create cluster, anything um, before we create a vCenter uh, data center. So this is very important. Data center is a logical uh, object. We are defining the you know like the topmost uh, uh, data center component like logical component under the vCenter server. So under the vCenter server we have to create the data center under that we can create all these things. Uh, so here I am just naming like BLR data center. So I have created a data center. So it is going on. Yes, a BLR data center has been created here. When I right click the data center, now I get all the options like adding ESXi host, create a cluster, everything. Most of the option we will get it under the data center. So this is very important to create the data center, right? And the third one is creating a folder. So basically uh, what we can do is uh, uh, we can uh, create a folder structure. We can create a folder structure for better uh, organizing and better management. So when you right click the uh, data center, we can see like we can have a multiple folder like host and cluster folder, new network folder, storage folder, a new VM and template folder. So as of now, I'm going to, we can create a different folder to organize uh, various objects in the vCenter. I'm going to create a new host and uh, cluster folder now. So enter the uh, uh, folder name for your host and cluster. So maybe you have a, a different uh, uh, like in, in environment, right? You may have a production, you may have a stage environment, you may have a development environment. So better we can create a folder and add the host under that so that it, it is easy to manage and understand the difference between various environment, right? So I collect, I created a folder called BLR production. And I created an another folder. Let me create another folder called BLR stage or dev. Okay, let me add a st uh, stage. So I'm creating a folder called BLR stage. Okay, so we have created a different folder uh, which helps us to organize the things and uh, it simplifies the 
management of various objects in inside the vCenter server because under the vCenter server we can manage thousands of host and everything objects and next the fourth one is configuring vCenter server monitoring settings basically uh, imagine uh, we have to configure some of the things to enable the monitoring of vCenter server so by default uh, so we have uh, vCenter server supports like uh, you know like uh, there are multiple vCenter server alarms we can specify like uh, by default there are a lot of vCenter alarms like if any actions for example is CPA host uh, um, CPA uh, ESXA host CPU has been went up and we you want to notify it there are many ways we can notify one is by SNMP like email alerts or if you are using an SNMP servers we can send that one so here is the first thing if you are setting up on email alerts we need to configure the email settings like mail setting SMTP server information right so you, you can select the vCenter server uh, go to configure and general under that you can see a mail specify your SMTP server here and mail center we can specify the same name as our vCenter server for example MD demo vc at the rate md.lab so my email server is email.md.lab uh, something like that right and next is snmp receiver so we can also configure if you have an snmp server in your network so we can configure the snmp network and you can set the community string if you are having a multiple snmp receivers so we can uh, set all the uh, email receivers we can enable all the snmp receivers here So whatever if you have a custom port we can specify here specify the community name community string all these things click on save so we have specified uh, smtp and snmp uh, settings so that you know like uh, the monitoring setting have to be configured at the vcenter level so this is very important when we set up on a, a notification alarm or uh, uh, you want to receive an email notification or your monitoring system have to capture this alert this is very important we have to configure uh, these settings so once the snmp and smtp all the uh, monitoring related settings are configured we can configure our email action right so the next uh, fifth one is to configure vcenter server alarm actions so uh, we have as I said we have a default um, uh, alarms which is created in your vCenter server you can go to configure alarm definitions there are many of the default alarm definitions which has been created in the uh, vCenter server by default you can also add uh, multiple uh, alarms like for example if someone is deploying a vCenter uh, sorry if someone is deploying a virtual machine or adding a ESX host you want to receive an uh, alarm or you want to receive an email uh, we can set up that so let's uh, talk about let's uh, see some of the default ones so there is one called host memory status so I'm uh, editing this so that you know like by default it will be triggered within the vCenter but uh, it may not be necessary like every time I log into the vCenter server right so I have to receive it via my monitoring system or via an email alert so that in the alarm action you can click on next so there will be an option in the alarm rule we can select send email notification so if you select send email notification we, uh, if you want to receive the email notification select the toggle that bar and specify the email address which you want to receive this alert for we can also uh, modify the uh, subject email subject actually so i'm specifying admin at vmarena.com uh, so that you know like any any of the host memory is uh, when to read the status is uh, when to read so that you know like i will receive an email we can also enable snmp so that i you know whatever snmp service which we configured at the vcenter server will uh, receive this alert so that uh, from the monitoring system we can monitor uh, this alarm and we can uh, take an appropriate action um, on the uh, alarm actions or alert which we received from the vcenter server so similarly we can configure the alarm action for uh, uh, all the uh, alarms uh, which is created or you can also create a custom alarm
and next one is uh, configuring vcenter server root password expiration so basically um with the 7.0 we only have uh, appliance vcenter server appliance we no more support uh, uh, windows uh, vcenter server so to configure the root expiration uh, we can uh, go to an appliance management wami page from the vcenter server home page we have a link or if you don't find it you can find a https vcenter name with port for 5480 so it asks us to go to vcenter server uh, management you can log in with your root credential go to administration under the password expiration settings you can click on edit so basically this is the default password expiration for root user account is 90 days so if you want to modify it uh, the password expiration for uh, root account of vcenter server appliance we can configure whether you want to expire it or uh, uh, don't need uh, don't uh, the password should not expire uh, all these things uh, we can set up here so uh, this is my lab environment i'm just increasing it um, uh, to triple nine maybe 1000 days around 1000 uh, days we can also set an email address so that you know like if password is going to expire uh, i will be getting an uh, expiration warning uh, to this email address so that i can take and resetting the root password right then another thing is uh, the backup so configuring vcenter server appliance backup because vcenter server is a centralized management tool it manages your entire inventory you manage a lot of things right so it is very important we configure on vcenter server appliance backup so it supports various protocol like ftps https sftp ftp nfs uh, smb stdp there are a lot of protocol which supports so basically we have to configure the backup server location we have to specify the password all these things so we can also set the schedule for uh, vcenter server backup so that you know like it automatically takes the backup in case something went wrong or you our vcenter server has been crashed something so we can restore the vcenter server appliance um, so here is the uh, configuration information so we can specify the uh, backup schedule basically you can specify the protocol if you are using http specify http or ftp slash slash and provide the server name and uh, uh, directory where you want to store the vcenter server uh, backup right so we need to spe basically specify the uh, backup server location um, along with the uh, directory location as well so next is to uh, specify the username and password for the backup server credentials uh, so we can set the schedule whether you want to take a daily backup week up, weekly backup or a custom schedule and if you want to encrypt the backup so so that someone uh, cannot you know like misuse your backup we can specify the encrypt uh, password and uh, we can also specify the retention so how how much how many backups you want to uh, retain it so I can specify retain last seven backups or something like that. So next is data. So what kind of uh, data needs to be included in your vCenter server backup? If you want to include your stats and uh, performance data, or, uh, task and events, uh, we can also include that one. So once the backup uh, is configured, so it, uh, based upon the schedule, uh, it will automatically take the backup. And next one is joining vCenter server to AD domain. So by default, when we install the vCenter server, so it is um, only we can only log in with a uh, you know like lo local account. For example, vSphere.local is a local domain. We can only log in with the um, uh, the SSO domain like uh, vSphere.local domain, right? So if you go under the uh, vCenter server users and group, we can see the domain like vSphere.local and locals. So basically, this is nothing but which is very uh, uh, local to the vCenter server for a bigger organization and a very big virtual infrastructure we need to have a centralized authentication where users where different teams like a virtual machine uh, management team or os team have to log into your vcenter server using their active directory credentials so this is to uh, join first step in configuring the active directory authentication is to join our vcenter server to the domain for that select the active directory domain select your vcenter server click on join domain specify the domain name here so my domain is like md.lab uh, uh, you can also specify the OU structure which is actually optional so i'm not specifying here specify the uh, 
the credentials who have access to join any machine to domain specify the username and password so we need to uh, reboot this appliance like we send the server for the changes to take effect right so here node has joined to active directory successfully reboot the node to apply the changes uh, to uh, for to reboot the server uh, we can uh, reboot it from the wami appliance or you can uh, reboot it from ssh as well so i connected to admin page like we send a server admin page so from there actions select reboot so it will reboot once the server uh, once the v center server is rebooted um so i have rebooted the vcenter server let's go back to active directory domain let's see the status of uh, yes so uh, it is joined to the domain i have an option join domain is uh, now grayed out and uh, i have option of leave ad domain so once the ad is configured next we need to configure the identity sources as we said uh, before that login to vcenter server we can only do it from uh, vspear dot uh, like uh, local system domain right so here i am adding the active directory as an one of the identity source so we can use active directory integrated windows domain and there is an option called ad over ldap as well so i am selecting active directory integrated domain uh, my domain name is md.lab i am selecting use machine account uh, to join to the domain so yes my md.local is has been added as the identity sources here uh, now let's see how we can assign the permissions right the 10th thing is assigning permission to the vcenter server so we uh, we joined the uh, vcenter server to the domain and we configured the active directories identity sources let's understand how the user um, active domain users can be accessed to permission here so basically in the vcenter server there are default roles which is created uh, for example administrator read only virtual machine user so it have uh, administrator have full access full access rights if you click on privileges you can see like uh, the administrator can perform all the actions on the vcenter server so similarly read only will not have any privileges they can only just read the, the vcenter inventory they cannot perform any actions on that similarly this default role will have the uh, privileges assigned if, if something is matching with the, the default role we can also clone this role and uh, we can assign the users or you can also create a custom role by clicking on plus symbol we can create a custom role we can specify what are the privileges can be assigned to the users we can uh, you know we can specify each and individual uh, user so basically when we when we add the user accounts when we assign the permission to the vcenter server we have to relate a user account with one of the roles here so in the next um, uh, i will show how we are uh, how we can add a domain user and how we can relate these roles right so this is one of the example virtual machine power user if someone you want to uh, manage the virtual machines uh, and perform power operations on virtual machine we can assign that so let's see how to assign the permission uh, go back to uh, click on the vcenter server click on permissions tab you can click plus to add the permission for the vcenter server here in under the domain we can select md.lab which is my active directory domain specify the username for example i have a domain user account called admin01 is a domain administrator admin01 i can select the roles right this is what i was talking about so this is how like we are associating a user account with the role here so that whatever privileges assigned to the role that user also will get that particular roles right by this simplifies the process of assigning a permission you don't need to manually specify um, permissions for each of the user right you can simply create one role and add the user account into the role this simplifies so i have added the user called admin01 md uh, he is part of the domain actually so i have added let's log out from uh, the local admin and uh, log in with the domain credential to validate that uh, the domain addition and whatever the permission we added is uh, valid so i'm logging with the domain credential md admin 01 with the password click on login so i have assigned admin 01 as an uh, um, administrator um, role for the vcenter v server yes so the final one is we have configured all these things let's do uh, the next thing is to add esxa host so we we have a multiple esxa host deployed and installed but managing individual esxa hosts 
is a painful right the vCenter server is a centralized tool which helps us to manage thousands of ESX host and thousands of virtual machine from the single pan right so let's see how to add a ESX host right click any folder data center or anything uh, add host specify the host name or IP address uh, better specify the um, <clears throat> FQDN so here MD ESX one MD dot lab is my ESX host so uh, specify the root credential for the ESX host root and uh, root credential here click next accept the certificate warning certificate error click on yes to continue click next so it shows the summary of my ESX host what is the version what is the hardware model all these things next is we have option uh, whether if we have already added the license keys from the vCenter server we can select the license key for the ESX host if you don't have it continue the evolution license so I still have a license uh, valid for next 51 days so that's fine I'll continue with the evolution license click next Lockdown mode is nothing but you know it's a, it's kind of security feature. So it restricts the user login directly to the ESX host via SSH or uh, uh, host client. So it, it can only be managed from the vCenter server or from the uh, hardware console, right? So this is a security thing I'm not enabling. This is a VM location. So which location you want your virtual machine to be created? So this is my uh, uh, data center location. I selected that. Uh, ready to complete review all the settings click on finish so you can see that under the uh, task and events uh, recent task we can see that add standalone host uh, it's going on so basically um, it will add the ESXA host into the vCenter server inventory so after that we can manage the ESXA host we can create a virtual machine perform perform all the actions uh, from the vCenter server so we can add thousands of ESXA hosts and manage your entire virtual infrastructure uh, centrally uh, so that's it we understand uh, uh, 11 important things which we need to configure uh, you know like during your first vCenter server login once all these things are configured we are ready to manage our uh, add ESX host and manage our entire virtual infrastructure uh, here so I hope this is informative for you thank you so much please please do subscribe to the VMware Arena YouTube channel and also like this video if you really like it uh, please do subscribe to get the uh, latest updates about